I'm really curious to know how you can have an algorithm that detects inflammation in the body. I've never heard of any trackers doing that. That's kind of revolutionary. Like what are your biomarkers that you're tracking that aren't, that others aren't? Or are you just tracking the existing bar of biomarkers, but in a way that gives you an indication what their inflammation levels are like? Like I'm really excited about that. Gentlemen, episode seven of the Revised Larger Life podcast with my co-host, Joseph, and um, a new friend of ours, Jeff. How are you, brother? You well? I'm doing well, buddy. Thanks for having me on, Mark and Joey. It's uh, it's good to meet you guys uh, virtually. Uh, yeah, got got so much to talk about. Yeah, we do so much to talk about, and it's our pleasure to have you, brother. And we appreciate your time. We really, really do. So, ladies and gentlemen, from our last podcast, which was with Daniel talking about the CRD challenge, he mentioned. This gentleman that is now on our podcast with us. This is Jeff. This is Daniel's business partner who is part of the CRD Challenge and the Quantum Lee company that they've set up. I am going to clear the floor and let Jeff explain mm. a little bit more about his part in the CRD Challenge and the Quantum Lee company that they've set up and what their main goal is. So, Jeff, the floor is yours, sir. All right, buddy. Um, so, basically, we'll give a quick kind of overview of my kind of journey with light and circadian biology. So um, early last year, a good buddy of mine sent me that uh, Tetragrammaton podcast with Cruz and Huberman and uh, Rick Rubin. And I'd never heard of Jack Cruz before. I'd never heard of any of this circadian biology stuff. And my head like exploded after hearing that six and a half hour long podcast, dude. Um, it just opened my eyes to see the world in a whole new light, pardon the pun. And um, even though it explains so many things wrong with the health of the world today, like most of the chronic disease on this planet is caused by uh, prolonged and severe like circadian disruption, which has been exacerbated by the prevalence of blue in our uh, LED lighting and on our computer screens, you know, since the advent of the iPhone, we think that it's just so innocent to just stare at your screen like this right before bed, but nobody has any idea that we're drugging ourselves, um, yep. essentially. And so anyway, I didn't know any of this stuff. I found it really, it was like Occam's razor. It explains like the simplest explanation is usually the right one. And this fit that bill. It just hit me like a ton of bricks as, this seems like the truth to me. Like you recognize truth when you hear it. And so even though it explained everything, I was still kind of skeptical. I'm like, it didn't explain the X, Y, Z that you have to do. You have to do this in the morning, this uh, throughout the day and this at night. It didn't give me that. And so I was a little bit lost. And thankfully I had this one friend, uh, Tyler, that I play tennis with that sent me this podcast. He said, dude, the formula is so simple. It changed my life. All you have to do is get outside in the morning first thing without sunglasses. And then at the tail end of the day, you wear some of these red or orange colored blue blocking glasses and that sets your circadian rhythm up. And over time you start feeling like a whole new person. Mm -hmm. And he told me, he swore that he, uh, he started losing weight without working out. His anxiety levels dissipated that he didn't even realize he had anxiety before. And he said by the end of after doing this for several months, he started feeling like a whole new person. And you hear stories like that and you're like, yeah, right. Yeah. If, if this was true, everyone would know about it. Right. It's so it's too easy. And, yeah. you know, health, good health is supposed to come hard. So I, I was really skeptical of his story. Uh, and even though that podcast explains so many things wrong with the health of the world today, I was still a little bit skeptical of it because it would be known worldwide if this were really true, right? And so I said, I'm going to put this to the test. I'm going to do my own little challenge, so to speak. I'm going to prove my friend wrong. I'm going to get outside. I'm going to do all the things. I'm going to get outside first thing in the morning for 20 minutes. I told myself that at the beginning. And then at the tail end of the day, I'm going to wear these stupid orange looking, or orange lens blue blocking glasses. Like this isn't going to do anything. Um, <laughs> but I was dead wrong. Like it worked. 
And I s gradually started feeling just like my friend experienced, like a new version of myself. Like I'm a different person now that I started getting my circadian rhythm in check. And um, I guess what I'm getting at is on a, I've been on a mission ever since then. Once I started like truly felt and experienced firsthand all these changes, then I've been on a mission like, okay, now I need to learn everything there is about circadian biology that I possibly can. Been going down the, the podcast rabbit holes, been joining the Jack Cruz forum and his Q&As and joining Kiera Lee's uh, school group and Kelsey Dexter's school group and just learning as much as I possibly can because it's like an addiction that to, <laughs> to uh, gather up all this information and just with the mission of not just filling my brain with knowledge, but just to have more information at my disposal that I can try to convince other family members and friends to try this so they can experience firsthand what it is I'm talking about. Mm. And that's been the hardest thing, um, you know, all throughout last year, after I started feeling these changes, I've been on a mission. I've just been contemplating every single day. How do I convince people to try these things? Because you'll, you try to explain to somebody uh, to wear these orange lens glasses at night and you might as well be telling them to wear a tinfoil hat or just to do something crazy because that's what it seems like. And I totally get it because whenever I first started wearing these blue blocking glasses last year, I felt crazy a little bit because we're largely social creatures. And I only knew that one other friend on the planet that was wearing these things. Mm -hmm. And it just made me feel weird in that sense that I'm doing something that 99 plus percent of the population isn't like, it just feels weird. Right. And so <clears throat> I guess the point that I'm getting at is that I've just been yearning for a way to connect people so that they don't have to go on this journey and, and do these weird light principles um, all by themselves. What if we kind of had a, made a challenge out of it? Like, uh, I, so anyway, this idea for the CRD challenge, really, it wasn't something I came up with. I was writing on paper and uh, revising out. It just hit me like a bolt of lightning one night whenever I was laying in my bed. Like we need to have a challenge similar to the ALS ice bucket challenge 10 years ago, just where it could be like a, a money raising thing as well, a fundraising for, you know, decentralized science and things like that. And it, it just felt right. It made the hair stand up on the back of my neck. And I knew I was supposed to do something with this. And I didn't know how, because I work in healthcare, but I work in information technology. So medical record software, programming, report writing, uh, making the system work for the nurses and doctors workflows. And I was like, how am I going to do this? I'm not an influencer. I don't know. So I started pitching the idea to several different people um, in this space. And they all supported the idea, but nobody had time or inclination to like actually make this work. Everybody's got their own lives. And then thankfully uh, at a quantum biology collective, like online event, I met Daniel and we had a, like a, a separate meeting offline and I pitched him this idea and he was like, holy shit, dude, like this is, ah. this is it. It resonated with him too. The way that it made the hairs on my back of my neck stand up. And we've been fast friends. We've been talking ever since. And he's been already like, what a better person to get involved with this because he's already been uh, delivering circadian education to thousands of people all across the globe for the past several years. And this is his mission in life. And he has, you know, a lot more time uh, and energy to throw at this than most any other person that I've talked to this idea about since then. And what do you know? Luckily, he also happened to be good friends with Avi and Lauren Jacobson in the UK who have, you know, ran some successful businesses and they're very philanthropic now. And they, um, they've just become aware of all this light stuff in a similar timeline to me a couple years ago. And they want to spread this mission too. And, um, thankfully they're behind this too, because they have a whole team of like website developers and, um, you know, just, marketing uh, people that can develop, uh, you know, logos on the fly really quickly. Like we have all this support behind us now and it's no longer just an idea. 
in my head, but it's actually coming to fruition. And, you know, we just had our social media launch uh, three days ago now. Yep. And it's been amazing. We already have 250 people in our free online school group. And hopefully that number grows to thousands uh, worldwide, uh, tens of thousands even within the next couple of months, because truth of the matter is anybody that tries these circadian uh, lifestyle habits and they stack them up, you know, morning light, light breaks throughout the day without sunglasses and uh, then blocking blue light at night, they're going to experience exactly what it is that I'm talking about. They're going to experience the levels of changes and shifts that Daniel has experienced as well as Avi and Lauren Jacobson. And it's our kind of like, it's our mission and our gift to the world just to give people the playbook that I didn't get the playbook of, you know, I had to go down a thousand different rabbit holes to figure out and piece together and then start stacking all these habits. If somebody would have told me from the beginning, X, Y, and Z that you have to do. And not only that, but here's the basic science behind it. I would have been forever grateful to have that knowledge given to me for free. And not only that, but to be a part of a community where I could ask all the questions that I didn't get answers to that I had to go digging for and I never got clear answers on until, you know, years of, uh, you know, kind of investigating these things. So, yeah, that's kind of where we're going with this CRD challenge. And, you know, just I think the reason that this has been the most impactful for me, especially is for two reasons. One, I, I was living a very circadian disrupted lifestyle, even, you know, completely unbeknownst to me because I have like seven monitors on my desk here and I just thought I was a night owl. I would get up, I would stay up till midnight or 1 a.m. and all my screens would be on at full factory settings. For some reason, I just thought it was cool to have all my monitors on. You know, you got, yeah. you got Twitter up here, you got, you know, uh, tennis highlights here. Just, just, I wanted to be bombarded with all the information and have all these monitors blasting, but I had no idea that I was drugging myself uh, with melatonin suppressing uh, blue light from every angle. I was just getting bombarded. I was blasting myself and I had no idea that that was um, causing like my, you know, lack of energy, lack of vitality, lack of like uh, passion and purpose in life. But now I know firsthand that that's what it was. And the odd thing is, is that most people like me, if you had asked me a couple years ago, how's your energy? How's your anxiety levels? How's your passion and purpose for life? I would have said, I'm fine. Thanks. This is, this is, this is what I thought was normal mm-hmm. for a 40 year old to uh, feel like, but I had no idea. Yeah. Uh, and mm-hmm. nobody can possibly know the benefits yeah. of an improved circadian rhythm until they experience it firsthand. And the only way to do that is to implement these uh, circadian lifestyle practices uh, consistently. Like it's not that hard. Uh, So yeah, that's been my mission. And uh, me and Daniel have been just talking literally every single day on how we can make this work, how we can deliver this message in a way that's like we purposefully wrote all the educational content in a way that um, is easily uh, understandable by like any seventh grade student. You know what I mean? Like we want to break it down in a very easy way for people to learn these things because not everyone wants to know the detailed science or learn thousand new vocabulary words. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and that's if, only, that's if you're only reading one Jack Cruz blog, there's thousands right. more. You read all the others. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Stay away from the Jack Cruz blogs. Like even doctors can't understand those things. Like those are in depth. Yeah. I remember the first blog of his that I read, it took me two and a half days, not consistently. Like I didn't read it for a full, like two and a half days. What I mean is it took me that length of time just to get through it. Right. And probably understood about 25% of it. And that's not to say there's anything wrong with that. It just shows where I need to level up, but it also shows why something, because what he, what he's doing is fantastic. And I was exactly the same as you. I basically tripped into the Huberman, uh, Rick Rubin, Jack Cruz podcast because I was following Huberman. And it just popped up on my on my YouTube thing. And so I, I listened to the first one, listened to the second one, listened to them again, and then again, 
then listened to the same tetragrammaton with RFK Jr. and Jack Cruz. And then with the other one with Jack Cruz, with the other guy that I can't remember his name, Bill something. And then I was like, right, I need to, I need to dive into this. And then I started listening to every other Jack Cruz podcast that's possibly out there. Then I fell up into like other people that are in the space, like Sarah Kleiner, Carrie Bennett, uh, Dr. Alexis Cowan, Kira, <clears throat> and the other. And then I didn't even put the pieces together about Daniel at that point. Cause obviously I'd known him for, for me and Joey have known him for a while now. And, and he's always been the glass, the blue blocking glasses guy helping kids with their sleep and their light exposure at school. And I never put the two together. Really. I was like, is this what he's been talking about? That never happened. But I think the reason why it's important that what you guys are doing is happening now is because just from my own, obviously my, I can only talk from my own experience I'm a geek and I will, I understand these things and I love the science and I love going into the quantum and I love understanding the cellular mechanisms and all that type of stuff. That's what I love to do. Me and Joey do bloods and other tests and other things like that. So our, our functional medicine side of things, I know Jack doesn't like functional medicine doctors, but we're not functional medicine doctors. Luckily, we just studied functional medicine. So we've got a slightly more nuanced, open mind, decentralized approach to these things. But coming back to my point, it's really complicated for lay people to understand it. And it becomes, as you say, you get to point me like, where, well, where the fuck do I start then? Like, what right. is the first thing I need to do? Because we've got, we've got melanin and then we've got melatonin and now we've got POM C and then we've got ATCH and now we've got blue light and then we've got red light and then we've got green light and, and blue light and well, uh, violet light. And it just gets overwhelming. So the fact right. that you had this, this brainchild of this challenge is brilliant because it just lays the foundations it's like this is all you really need to do to start this and you mm. will get such a return of investment but you will also get an incredible return of effort and that come then can, comes down to the consistency you can't do this for just a week and expect to see dramatic changes it's going to take the full challenge to really feel the differences, better sleep, better energy, the weight loss, because I've experienced it. I've changed mm -hmm. nothing else about what I do. I still eat the same foods, except it's all seasonal now. But without me trying anything, I've gained two kilos of muscle and I've lost a tremendous amount of body fat. And I wasn't even trying. Like my body fat wasn't high to begin with, it was only 10%. I'm now at like 6.4. I didn't even try to do that. I'm not trying to do that. I'm eating the same calories. I, but I'm spending a lot more time outside in the light. So I'm getting my, I've, I've, I've coined this term. So please add this to the CRD challenge if you want to. We've got macronutrients, we've got micronutrients, we've got phytonutrients, but we've now got photonutrients. Yeah. Yes. Love Ooh. that. Photonutrients. So I've just been getting my photonutrients, more and more of it. And the more I've done that and the more time I've spent outside, the, the more the sun I've got, got up and the more the sun I've gone to sleep, blue light, blue light bulbs, incandescent bulbs, all that stuff. I mean, my my flat looks like a cave at night. There is literally like three mm. candles on. <laughs> no, that's about it. And a red light summer. So it kind of looks a bit like a brothel, but that's all I've changed. And then everything else has happened from there. And again, like you feel different. You look different. Like you generally look different. Like people are saying to me, like, what have you been doing? I'm like, quantum. They're like, but you look younger. You look different. I'm like, yeah, mm. I know. <laughs> I know I do. I look very different. I look healthy. <laughs> That's what I look. I look healthy. I genuinely look healthy now. And it's, I guess it's the same for you guys as well. Like the, the things that you notice is just unbelievable. So I'm, I'm so grateful that you guys have created this challenge because it's going to bring so many people forward on their health journey in such a short space of time. I just, yeah. I, I just, I beg everybody listening. It's free please for the love of god join and do it with groups of people it's so much easier to do it with groups of people if you want to go fast go alone if you want to go far go together do it with groups of people and this mm. is no better group this is the best group to do it with so uh, i'll be i'm yeah. there Me and joey are both in it we're all part of the school community for the crd we're all the ambassador parts of it as well so everybody join in and i'm going to end my piece there joe what have you got to say brother how's light impacted you oh massively yeah i'm just i was just trying to find a photo back about three years ago when mm. i uh, started this this deep diving this quest of functional medicine nutrition and where we we sort of 
grew our friendship through the from uh, the Institute of Health, didn't we, Mark? <laughs> and uh, you know, I always used to burn. I always used to spend, you know, my time indoors, um, working in gyms, working with clients, and kind of the, it was a big pivotal shift for me back around sort of just after 2022, where I met Mark and I met Daniel, and I was like, wow actually didn't realize that how much this interferes with everything I've been doing already, trying to improve my gut health, the mold issues, looking at blood work and just piecing these pieces of the uh, puzzle together. And it can become really complicated because I'm still learning all of it as well. I'm learning from Mark and, and this whole quantum subject is it blows my mind, but the simple things work very effectively. And I've put that to the test because as you know, Mark, living in the UK, there is minimal sunlight. And it is, <laughs> that's an understatement. <laughs> you know, we are heavily vitamin D deficient, mineral deficient. You know, we're mineralless. Uh, we're overfed and undernourished, let's put it that way. But I put the sun to the test, you know, the last two years, getting morning sunlight, not wearing sunglasses. I don't think I've worn sunglasses in over three years now. Mm-hmm. And just use, you know, natural methods like using coconut oil using hover oil olive oil as a natural tan using carrot seed oil and i i don't burn anymore in the sun like i used to burn i used to look like the ball behind me red and you know that's just 10 minutes of exposure but partly because of poor diet as well but i wasn't getting exposure in the morning or in the evening it was all over the place working in shifts so yeah i'm now one of those weirdos that wear my, my orange orange glasses in the evening i don't care because i know how it makes me feel i wake up every day with endless energy like i've had the best tan i've ever had for someone who lives in the uk i've actually had friends family compliment you're like are you using the sunbeds joey i'm like no <laughs> i'm using something that is free that is out <laughs> like big ball of fire in the sky i have been using that all summer <laughs> like even working on an ironing board when I'm taking calls out in the sun just to get the benefits of it. And I never felt any better. Like my vitamin D has shot up. Like it was in the low, uh, in the UK, we use uh, nanomoles per liter as a measurement. It was in the low 50s. And now it's way above in the 150s. So that's tripled, you know. Mm. And that's dietary as well and getting good fats, but gut health too. But look, I'm going to put a lot of it down to the fact that I'm just getting outside more as well. And yeah. it's also a, a, like a, a, a such a positive influence on a lot of clients who've got autoimmune issues as well. People who have been burning all summer, like like me, you know, very pale skin type one that have sort of put the put it to the test, just slowly build it up, slowly build that melanin, get outside more, but get you know little bits often and build it up, just like you would your reps in the gym. It's not hard, but it is like you said, Mark is. Being with you know like-minded people does help, and you know winning together, you learn together, and you get better results. So yeah, for me, it's been life-changing. It really has. Yeah. For someone who used to game a lot, like yourself, yes, like mm-hmm. you used to be behind screens, you know, chronically fatigued, and I like I've only just connected the dots the last two years. Like, yeah, shit, that mean makes a lot of sense. As a kid, I used to be outside all year round, even in the winter had the best sleep, loved life. But then I found the Xbox and then, yeah, mm-hmm. my health <laughs> deteriorated. My choices of food deteriorated. And you kind of think the two come in hand in hand, but also just how impactful the sun has been and how it governs all. It governs everything. Yep. So, yeah. yeah, it's huge. Like, we're honestly, if you think about it, what we're trying to do is – I don't know. This is kind of a crazy analogy, but think of it like there's a, a sci-fi movie where there's a bunch of uh, consciously aware plants and they think the laws of nature don't apply to them. And they start going to live in inside under artificial light. And, you know, there's this gr- small group of one percent of the population of plants goes outside and, and they like, uh, you know, honor darkness at night. And they start feeling like a whole new like versions of themselves. And then they try to convince the other 99% of plants that just come outside. This is how we were designed to live. We were supposed to, you know, the laws of nature apply to us. That's kind of what we're doing here. It's it's a weird thing. Like we figured it, we, we figured something out and not just as a matter of 
fact that we read about it in a study or someone told us about something, we figured something out firsthand through direct experience that improving our circadian rhythm has dramatically improved our lives. And yet we're in this weird predicament where you hand somebody a pair of blue blocking glasses and you can tell them, look, this is gonna give you greater energy, greater mood, greater sleep, just wear these after sunset. It's gonna reduce your risk of uh, you know, autoimmune conditions, diabetes, depression, cancer. And people are like, eh, I'll pass. <laughs> no thanks. Like. I, don't, I just don't get it. I, I think people are so stuck in their ways of living that maybe they just can't fathom that a pair of orange glasses could do anything in the evening. So they won't even consider trying it because in the same way that I felt last year, it feels a little bit crazy because not many people are doing it. But I truly believe that we're social creatures. And once people realize that, you know, two or three of their neighbors in their neighborhood are, are doing these and, and they start telling them of their experience or more and more people in their family or their friend circles start experiencing these shifts that we have experienced, then I think people are gonna be more apt to try it. It's just a matter of less than 1% of the pe population has figured out how to reverse their CRD and improve their lives. And it's just such a small percentage of the population that it seems like uh, it, like it can't possibly be a real thing, but we're gonna get there. We're gonna convince them. And one other point I had uh, that came up on what you said, Mark, was we didn't have any direction, right? When we first started learning of this stuff, it was just an idea that a light bulb moment that went off in our head, like, oh, I guess I need to go learn about this stuff. And exploring tons of forums and listening to 100 podcasts, like, first of all, nobody on the planet has got time for that besides geeks like us that truly just want to throw ourselves into it and learn all we can. So that's why we've made it so simple, like 20 minutes of education approximately each week, 20 minute video on, you know, the week one content, which we won't get into the details of that, but we're, we teach people how to stack these habits and 20 minutes for the week two, 20 minutes for the week three. So like if people literally just give one hour of their time. That's less than the time that uh, a podcast would take yep. to listen yep. to that they do every day. Then they might just learn the most important aspects of circadian biology that every single person on the planet needs to know in a way that's easy to understand. And they don't have to go down the rabbit hole like we did guys. Mm -hmm. they, they just We're trying to give them the basics. And of course there will be times where they'll be searching for more answers because they might want to geek out like we did. And, you know, maybe we'll point them to some more um, knowledgeable resources or places like, you know, the quantum biology collective has the Institute of applied quantum biology. People can get certified in this and uh, you know, I'm quantum, in quantum, quantum, as well. Yeah. And the quantum health Academy is supposed to be a really good one too. I signed up to be on the first cohort of that next year, which I'm really excited of because they're going to go in a lot more in depth is what I've heard. Like Cameron board, and yep. Kira Lee and uh, Jalal Khan are developing the content for that, and they're going deep. It's like a 10 month course. Yeah. I didn't even yeah, know so that you could join that yet. I'll have to have a look at that. It, they, had, they have pre enrollment uh, type stuff now. So, yeah. Have a look at then. That's so, anyway, yeah, um, we're excited about the CRD challenge. I think I've said pretty much all I can to say about that, but let's. I'll let you guide the conversation where you want, but at some point, I want to know about this this new product. Yeah, we'll, we'll, I'm park, we'll park the the quantum for a moment, and we'll talk about this ring. So, the reason why Jeff's excited about this ring is because I sent it. We've been speaking about um, a lady called Kira. She's uh, doing the quantum. Uh, what's it called? The quantum, quantum health Academy. Academy. Health Academy. Right there, uh, yeah. He's running a retreat in El Salvador um, in November called Solar Culture, which myself and Jeff and Daniel and Alexis Cowan and Sarah Pugh and a lot of other quantums uh, finest are going to. And I sent her one of these rings to, to try out. I had a conversation with her about it and being coming from a, a nursing background and working with clients the same way that myself and Joey do that have critical illnesses and stuff like that. It's a different way of monitoring things. So, the reason why she was excited, and I'm going to explain this to you now, Jeff, is the fact that obviously you've got other health trackers, which are rings. I'm not going to start naming names. You can just search them. A lot of people know what they are. 
And they're measuring HRV, resting heart rate, steps, body temperature, SpO2. And then they're going to give you a recovery score. They're going to say to you, okay, based on these metrics, you have recovered this percentage today. So they might say to you, you're 80% recovered, and it will show you how much deep sleep you had and all the rest of it. And that's great. But what happens then is it becomes a competition between you and your recovery score. So you might wake up and you might feel amazing, but your health tracker goes, nope, you've only recovered 50%. And you're like, oh, what? Oh, now I feel shit. I was feeling great. And now I feel shit. Oh, it means I can't go to the gym today. So it enables you to build into these bad habits again. Or, it, you know, you might have only slept three hours but you've had an, you, your body's had an automatic HRV rebound, knowing you've only had three hours sleep. And so it's bumped your HRV through the roof and aura or whatever health tracker, sorry, I didn't mean to mention names there, says, oh, you've had 90, 96% recovery. And you're like, great, I'll go to the gym and you smash it. And then you're knackered the next day. And for the next three or four days, you're now in a massive drop because you've overcooked yourself. So mm -hmm. this is slightly different because we're not looking at that data. What we, the reason why I was created was to help people who had very severe COVID and were getting long COVID. And we needed data based off inflammatory scores. So we needed an algorithm that could predict inflammatory states within the body. So as you know, again, just measuring that quantum side of things, everything that we're talking about, blue light, eating non-seasonal foods, eating processed foods, not going outside, not grounding, stare at your phone all day, Netflix binging, all that stuff, it causes chronic inflammation in the body or what we would classify in quantum biology terms as chaos because the body is constantly trying to stay balanced. And when that stress keeps rising and cortisol keeps going up and more stress and more stress and more stress, we're now getting tipped and it goes into that extreme point where we've now got exponential amount of chaos. This chaos makes the mitochondria not function properly. And now all of a sudden we've now got disease. All disease is stemming from mitochondrial dysfunction, as we know. So Just quickly, sorry to yeah. interrupt. Tell the listeners what mitochondria is. Okay. Don't know. So you've got prokaryotes, eukaryotes. These were like kind of subspecies back in the day, viruses, bacteria, and all those other types of things. And this is just one of those bacteria that we took on, which ended up becoming part of us. So they are the only other thing inside our body that has a separate DNA. We've got our nuclear DNA and then the mitochondria have their own. They've also got their own timekeeping. They produce light in the body at 330 nanowaves. So they produce UV like the sun uh, and it's equal to the sun, if not more powerful. Um, and they are part of the electron transport chain, which basically is how basically all energy is photons, light is photons, food is photons, everything is photons. As they go into the electron transport chain, this gets turned into usable energy for the body. And that, that outcome is ATP, adenosine triphosphate. Now they'll say the mitochondria are the powerhouse of the cell and all this type of stuff. And ATP is what runs the body. ATP is just the byproduct of all of those things. Water is the battery of all of this stuff. So mitochondria produce their own water, which is known as exclusion zone water. Um, and you've got different, you've got two different types of mitochondria. You've got coupled and uncoupled. So if you're northern haplotype uh, type of mitochondria, you will be the uncoupled type. They function very well in cold environments because they create their own heat. Um, but they can also adapt to heated environments where if you're the coupled type, like coming from like Africa or somewhere like that, you function really, really well in heat, which is why all the long distance marathon runners and the, the athletes that are very explosive are coming from those areas because their mitochondria is basically set to give them power instantly. Sure. But you then take them out of that and you put them into, I don't know, Iceland. Iceland yeah. <laughs> They're you know, really, really, really struggle, like really struggle. So the mitochondria are critical. They keep us alive. So everybody knows about, you know, you've watched those detective movies where they they, kid, they, they end up arresting that guy, which is going to give them the, the information to get the bad guy. And he's got a cyanide capsule in his tooth and he chews on it. And all of a sudden the foam comes out of his mouth. And he's dead in like 10 seconds. The reason why he's dead in 10 seconds is because cyanide kills mitochondria. That's specifically what it does. So 
that's how important mitochondria are. If I clicked my fingers like Thanos and I made everybody's mitochondria disappear, the whole world would be humanless yep. within a second. That's cool. how important mitochondria are. And I don't want to go too much deeper than that because it is going to start losing people, but they are everything. And if you want yep. to understand true health, you have to know mitochondria and you have to learn them, but they are, they are so bloody complicated. I am nowhere near versed enough to go any deeper than that. Um, no, that's what I'm understanding of these things. So, right. Caveat. Going I want to know about this algorithm, Mark, that you were talking about. I'm really curious to know how you can have an algorithm that detects inflammation in the body. I've never heard of any trackers doing that. Mm -hmm kind of revolutionary like what are your biomarkers that you're tracking that aren't that others aren't or are you just tracking the existing bar biomarkers but in a way that gives you an indication what their inflammation levels are like like i'm really excited about that exactly so unfortunately for me in this particular moment the genius mind behind the algorithm is one of my business partners called hoken from malaysia he's a pharmacist and a, a, a i've I've only ever spoken to one, well, heard one other person speak at his level of knowledge, and that is Jack Cruz. Like, this guy's knowledge is just ridiculous. And he just came up, he, he came up with this algorithm. It just, I don't think it was made to do those things. He just, I think he just thought there needs to be a way to do this. And so he just started mm -hmm. playing around. And we just needed data. And so we had a hospital, I believe it was in, was it either in Thailand or Vietnam, where people had COVID. And they allowed us to use their data. And at the time, we didn't have a ring. We had a, um, a bio strap. That's what we were using. Because other health trackers like Garmin, Whoop, Aura, they, at that time, in 2020, they locked down all of their API, so you couldn't use it. So bio strap was the only open source one. And it had very good sleep data, because that's the most of the data that we're using. Day daytime data is OK but we're really focusing on the data of when you are actually asleep, not micro wakes or anything like that. We want, if you're in bed for eight hours, removing all your micro awakenings, you're probably going to get four to five solid hours of what we class as restorative sleep. That's what we're focusing on. And then we add on top all the other things, daytime activities, supplements, all those other things. And so we weren't getting the data that we needed. We were just like, that people basically are going to need to go into a serious, have a serious issue for us to get the data that we need, or we're not going to prove anything. And unfortunately for them, which is very sad, but fortunate, fortunate for us in this current situation, which enables us to help more people, people died experiencing. They didn't die necessarily of COVID. COVID caused whatever issues they had going on in their body to exacerbate to the point where it killed them. So they died with COVID rather than of COVID. And this proved that the algorithm worked because we were able to predict it was going to happen. We couldn't mm. stop it, but we could predict it. And I want that word, predict, to just be pinned for a moment and people to hold that thought. So we then started beta testing this with groups of people. And we got biohackers, basically, because we knew biohackers love wearing devices. So we got a group of some of the better known biohackers that we could get at that time. We didn't get the likes of Ben Greenfield or Dave Asprey or what have you, because they're just unapproachable. But we got other people down the ladder. And we just got people to test it. I, and I was one of them as well. And, you know, we're all rocking around wearing our, our whoop and our aura, our aura and then this bio strap. And we're measuring data against them. Like, how accurate is it? Can we predict these things? And we created the scoring system. So we've got a green, yellow, or amber, and red traffic light system. When you get your results in the morning, rather than it giving you a recovery score, it's giving you a longevity score. It is saying to you, based on the data that you have provided, you are in this state of balance. You are this recovered from a inflammatory load perspective, like AMPK, mTOR, catabolic, anabolic, that type of stuff. And we obviously tweaked it and changed it and tweaked it and changed it as these years went on. And the, the day that I knew something was very, very special about this device was in November 2022. So Joey will remember August 2022 because me and him went to an event 
from the Institute of Health in Manchester. We were sharing a room, and at that point, I mean, I'm not going to hide it, I was having really, 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 really poor health, like excruciatingly bad symptoms. And it just proceeded from that point. And in November, I there was a diagnosis. I'm very careful how I word this. There was a diagnosis of an autoimmune condition, mm -hmm. which was a very bad case of ulcerative colitis. So this meant that at this point, I was going to the bathroom 20 times a day. I couldn't leave my flat. I couldn't even go for a walk five minutes down the road because the anxiety would make my bowels empty. I'd have to come home. So, and it wasn't like going to the bathroom. This was just blood. I'll be losing maybe two cups of blood a day. Now, why is this significant? Because this got diagnosed in November. It started with small symptoms in August. This algorithm predicted it in February, months and months and months before. And I thought, well, we need to test this to see if this works. So I'm not going to do anything about it. I'm just going to see what happens. I'm just going to keep living my life as I am. And lo and behold, autoimmune. And I was like, holy shit. This predicted it. I was like, this is incredible. And I've got a message from, the, from Ken, the guy whose algorithm this is, messaged me in February saying, you have signs of autoimmunity. I've got the picture of it. I've still got the message on my WhatsApp from that February. And I was like, I was like this is huge. Because not only can it predict autoimmune states, it can predict COVID outcomes. It can predict cardiovascular stuff. It can predict physiological stress, psychological stress. It can, like, the, as, as we're working through the beta test, he'll message me saying to me, what emotional stuff have you been through recently? And I'm like, God damn, this guy's good. How did he know? <laughs> <laughs> I love you that see your data. Yeah, yeah. Just, You're on to something, Mark. That sounds like the most exciting thing mm -hmm. I've heard of. Like, hopefully you got your IP, like, locked down on a tight server because that seems invaluable to the world. Like, if it can truly, if it's proven to predict things uh, aside from just – your anecdotal story, you realize this is monumentally huge because it's the algorithm that does it. It's it's the same probably style of ring and measures the same types of things that other places do, which only tell you your sleep score. But if yours is using, it's measuring the same data, but it's yep. it's uh, it's algorithmically determining uh, your longevity outcomes yep. and your uh, susceptibility to autoimmune conditions. That sounds Fucking amazing. <laughs> Good for you. Thank you. Wow. And just one extra thing I want to add into that, just because I don't want to make this a whole plug about this. Yeah. What's really good about this is now we've come away from the straps, which we were wearing, and we're now put it into a ring, which makes it more wearable. But we've now got a unified app. So this ring came with its own app, and we had our own web app. We've now unified them. So within the app, you've got sleep deep sleep, REM sleep, HRV, steps. You've got all that stuff. If you want to look at that data, you've got it. But our app is a self-learning AI system. So for the first 14 days that you use this, you enter lifestyle factors, everything. When you went outside in the sunrise, what water you drank, when you drank it, how much, what your breakfast was, what supplements you're taking, peptides, medication, anything, you add it in there. And you do that for 14 days and you give it as much data as you possibly can. Think of this as chat GPT in an app, helping you with your health. You need to give it as many prompts as possible so it can learn you. Then once it has, it now starts coming out with algorithmically predicted recommendations so i did some peptides yesterday i'm a peptide therapist so i use peptides in my day to day and i've been just healing a, a little bit of a niggle in my shoulder and uh for the past week it's been telling me your tb500 your bpc your your human growth hormone 
all doing really, really well, keep taking them, but you took methylene blue, don't do that. It had a negative effect. So I was like, okay, so I stopped the methylene blue. And then today when I woke up and I checked it, it was like, okay, your TB500, it's picking them out one by one. Your TB500 is doing well. GHK is not doing so well. We would recommend you take the dosage down or reduce the amount that you're taking over a period of time. BPC is working well, but your growth hormone is really, really working well. This is the thing that we think you should be taking every day. I'm like, I, even I get shocked. I'm like, holy shit. <laughs> like this thing is talking to me like it's, a, like it's a human and it's telling me what, and it's like, you had a cold plunge in the morning. Don't do that. You had a cold plunge in the evening. That worked. That worked, that you responded well to that. So you can start to change your days based on this. So if you're a, an N of one experimenter, I guess like we all are, and you're like, oh, I'd like to try that supplement. I want to see how that works with me. And you take it for a week. And then our system will say, hmm, that's not doing you too good. We'd back off that if I were you. And then you stop taking, all of a sudden you feel different. You're like, oh, I actually feel better. I didn't realize I felt crap. Well, now I actually feel a bit better because I've stopped taking that one thing. Mm. And I've applied this with clients, some of my high, high net worth clients, other beta testers that I've sent the ring to. Like I've got my parents doing it. My mum, she's 73. My daddy's 71. My stepdad's 78. They've all got this ring and they're adding it in. And my mum's like, tell me not to take my magnesium at this time of day. I was like, yeah, don't do that then. Take it a little bit later. <laughs> take it with food. Oh, that's clever. <laughs> I'm like, yes, how does it know that? I'm like, mum, I'm not going to go into this. <laughs> I'm not gonna, it just knows. There's this thing that it knows. So, um, so yeah, dude, if you're excited about this, I'm more than happy to send it. Have you ever had an aura or anything like that? I used to have a... Uh... Let's see. I, I used to have an Apple watch, but then, you know, once I started learning all the circadian effects of, uh, you know, whatever, then yeah, I, I would love to have one of those. Oh my God. That sounds amazing. You guys are onto something like, um, I'm intrigued. I'm really intrigued. That sounds amazing. It sounds I'll too good to be true, but I, I'll put it to the test. Yeah. I'll Just send like, you a yeah. size. So we'll get yeah. a, size in, a ring size and kick shipped out to you. I would suggest it doesn't really matter what finger you put it on, but I would recommend you put it on your non-dominant hand. I sized my wrong hand. I'd recommend you put it on your non-dominant because it's not going to get scratched. And mm -hmm. these, these two fingers are the best just because they're the, the, I don't know if you can see these balloons. I don't know what's going on with these balloons. <laughs> did you see that as well? So yeah, wait, did, did you click a button to make it do that? Or is this just like AI? Here's you talking about something and it. <laughs> <laughs> why is that only mine why is it picking on me i don't understand but um i'll send you a sizing kit out size the ring up that fits the best for you then just drop me a message and say this is the size and then i'll, I'll get the guys to ship you a ring and then we can get you up on the app set up and you can start testing it out see what you think oh my god that's amazing yeah thank you for the opportunity that's really cool my, my pleasure my pleasure happy to happy to sorry that was very much a plug for the ring which i wasn't expecting it to be but i at the same time it's important because I think with what you guys are doing with the CRD, with these types of things that are becoming available, it just goes to show you that there can be a marry of these things. Like I understand it's not great to be wearing something that's EMF and all the rest of it, but I mean, God, I'm on a laptop right now. I've got a plugged in microphone. I've got a bloody ring light there. Like I can't escape every non-native EMF. And if I've got something which is going to help me in over the long term, in a predictive manner, I think that's a great thing. And that way then you can monitor, you could actually monitor your body's response to circadian rhythms. I did. Yeah, so I can't wait. Light, light, grounding, all that stuff, it's been amazing. I think it is a way, Mark, you know, you can, you can, you know, what we do with our clients and what we're doing here is you can feed a man, you know, well, feed a man a fish, you feed him for a day, right? But if you teach a man how to fish, you feed him for a lifetime. So yep. these sort of devices, like I've had a long break and I'm, you know, excited to try it as well, but yeah, I'll send you a ring, Rude. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But, but the reason why I hadn't mentioned it is because I, I've taken a massive break from all this stuff, like the wearables, the trackers, the whoops, the chest belts. Done it all. You know, got the you know got the t-shirt to prove it. But it's nice to take a break, but it's also nice to do something that's completely new with new algorithms and just test it for a little bit because it's like like you said it's. It's going to have minimal, you know, effects on the body in terms of what you're talking about with the, what we, you know, 
got exposure to every day phone in the pocket laptop how many people put a laptop on their their, their, their leg still you know who put their airpods in all oh, the mate, time so many people walking around london oh, well, around get here. AirPods. airpods just like, walk just walk in the street going into shops and just just doing their job every single day with airpods yep. so we're talking like you know very very low levels you know yep. if something's going to improve and teach you and hold you accountable and you know, tell you about your body, it's, it's possibly worth investing in, you know? Okay. I'm excited to try it with all my bodybuilding stuff as well. Because, oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. So yeah. I'll, send you, I'll send you a sizing kit out as well. And that way then and you can the size it. Stuff that we're doing together. It's, it's oh, even, yeah. even better. Mate, incredible that. Like, yeah, so much to talk about with that one. That's incredible. We'll have to, we'll have to send Jeff some of our samples for that too. See if, that, see if he gets a response from that. Yeah, for sure. Send me anything you got. We'll do, brother. We'll do. We'll do. Jeff's going to be a guinea pig from now on. Jeff, we're going to just send you a load of stuff. <laughs> I'll be a guinea pig. Just ship it to me. I'll try it. I'll write a review. <laughs> Amazing. Love it. Amazing. Yeah, yeah. So, Joe, I've talked a lot, man. I'm going to I'm gonna sit back. What would you like to add to this conversation today? No, I'm just absorbing it in. Like, it's it's been, you know, phenomenal. And I think it's hilarious when, when we first got talking, Jeff. Like, I think – it was because of this spreadsheet that you put together like oh, one yeah. person to, um, to to show me it's like you've got to read this shit and i'm like what and i've got it open here and i was i was just blown away like there's you know you've you've documented like over a hu- close to 300 studies yeah. from meta analysis to you know randomized trials of just how harmful like well the benefits of light so light environment studies but how detrimental it is for male and female health, for women who are pregnant, to people who have got cancer. Or like it, it fucking blew my mind. I was like, holy shit. And then you landed on like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Turn them off. <laughs> have it. You landed in our inbox. And I was just like, what are the chances? Like, I'm the guy who invented this sheet. You're like, we've got to get him on. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. No, that was like, I- I've been working in IT for the past, you know, 20 years, I've always just been like, I don't know, I, if I collect data, I, I started, you know, bookmarking my favorite studies on this, the ones that, oh, you, you know, the the Lindquist study from, you know, that uh, sun is, e- lack of sunlight is equal to uh, the all-cause mortality and health uh, outcomes of someone who smokes, essentially. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, you bookmark ones like that, or then I was like, okay, why don't I just put them on a spreadsheet and also add in my synopsis so that, you know, you know, the, the phrase that I keep going back for with, with the CRD challenge and with reading studies is, you know, ain't nobody got time for that. Nobody wants <laughs> to go on PubMed and read the whole study or even just look in the conclusions. Like I read the whole thing. I summarize it in layman's terms for the key points. And if there's valuable screenshots, I add those to the spreadsheet as well. So I'm happy and you know just grateful that it's um, made its way around to people around the world that like yep. are actually utilizing it. I know that I've shared it in you know Kiara's school group as well as Kelsey Dexter's and a lot of people are you know kind of just using that as as a kind of just a reference guide that just to easily go go and find okay here's all the 30 or 40 studies just that I've read on the benefits of sunlight. Uh, mm. that are beyond just vitamin D and, you know, the, the harmful effects of blue and rich light in the evening on human beings. There's hundreds of those. So yeah, for all the naysayers out there that think the circadian biology stuff isn't yet uh, proven, you're dead mm. wrong. There's thousands of studies on it. You're just not aware of them yet. Yeah. Mm. Uh, at all. So yeah, you can put that spreadsheet show notes if you want and uh people from yes. here and next year out there they can check it out yeah yes please if that's okay with you i'd love that to be there because of that's what it's there for yeah people are unfortunately scared of the sun unnecessarily i mean i don't i haven't looked through the whole sheet in in total because there's just so much data there no, i don't know, if, don't know if the study there because what's the there is there is a study or or a I think there's a study which shows that people that get melanomas have low vitamin d and mm-hmm. there's an inverse relationship between uh, vitamin D levels 
and melanomas. So explain yeah. that one. So as we yeah. have become a species that has feared the sun more and more, staying inside more and more and more under artificial blue light, how is it possible that as a population, our rates of melanoma have gone up across the mm. board? And not only just up for everyone, the rates of melanoma are much higher in the ones that get the least amount of sun. Can mm. anyone explain that? Can yep. anyone explain that data? Other than, you know, maybe it's the blue light that is suppressing our melatonin and yep. uh, leading to cancerous growth, uh, leading to that process of uh, mitosis in our cells. You know, it's like it's like Jack Cruz and uh, other doctors you know, theorize is any mitosis in our body, any, any cellular abnormal cellular growth is essentially our cells trying to reach the light. It's almost yeah. like, you know, a plant that is over here almost by the window. It's going to start growing towards the window to try to get the natural light that it has uh, it is supposed to receive on a daily basis. And in that same way, I think that's that's kind of what's happening. Uh, you know, there's a lot more complexities with uh, cancer in humans than that, but that's essentially uh, my opinion on what it is. And, and the, not just that, but so many other doctors, uh, that's what they think on this matter as well. And yeah. yet most people think that light doesn't have anything to do with our health. It's, mm. Illumin it's just a switch on the wall. It's completely harmless. Billions of people are doing this every day just without a thought. How can yeah. this possibly be causing us any harm? It seems like a conspiracy theory to believe, right? Like maybe if somebody presented you this this idea five years ago, you might have thought, yeah, right. You know what I mean? I, I think we can at least understand a little bit for the naysayers mm. where they're coming from, uh, switching off of the sunlight, but more of like the artificial blue light like how they could think of it as a conspiracy theory. Like you're expecting me to believe that 99% of the population is completely unaware that they're shining cancerous uh, uh, blue and rich light into their eyes in the evenings. That's, that's causing all the health problems of the world. And not only that, but 99% of the doctors on the planet don't even recognize this to be a real thing. It, it just seems so far fetched that most people sh shut down their mind when you start talking about this stuff, you might as well be trying to show them 200 studies proving that the earth is flat. Like they just dismiss it. They just uh, that, get out of here. I don't want to hear it. And and I get it. Cause the first time somebody showed me a study on grounding, I'm like, what, what's yeah. this? I, I kind of dismissed it. Like, it's almost like it doesn't matter what the study says. It's, yeah. it's my mind's made up that it's bullshit. But then once you make that switch in your mind, and you realize that the first law of thermodynamics, that which applies to every other organism and uh, piece of matter uh, in this universe, once you realize that, that that law of the universe also applies to us, which is energy is not destroyed and only changes form. So what happens to that 445 to 495 nanometer blue light that enters our eyes? Mm. It becomes energy in us. We don't just see light, folks. It becomes energy in us. It drives biological processes. We've known for 26 years that we have melanopsin in our eyes. And when yeah. I say we, I mean the scientific community. I just figured this out two years ago, as we did. But humanity has known that we have blue light detectors in our eyes for 26 years. And yet, it's still unfathomable, unfathomable for people to think that that blue light is having an effect on <clears throat> our health in any way. It's it's a weird time to be alive. I think you would agree, right? It is. Yeah. And I, I remember having this conversation with a client who is taking some of these uh, topic, well, top of these tips on board with their their family and their kids. And I I showed them when they study because they sort of have having issues with sleeping. And I said, well, what's your bedtime routine like? You know, what's your morning routine like? And it was a bit all over the place. And ever since they adopted some of the stuff that we mentioned about earlier with morning sunlight and just put like a, a red light in their room, getting away from blue light, stop giving them iPads, it's, it's changed their whole world, literally changed the whole world. And I think what kind of like, I kind of showed them some of these studies that you put together. I've got it here. Um, we've, we've got as a cohort study, it was, the one that you suggested, well, the one that you've documented here, 
Jeff, was done on 57,980 children. And they saw an increase, you know, television DVD screen time in children aged one to two years was associated with lower developmental scores at two and three years. And these studies go on and on and on and on and on. And we know that because obviously children's like eyes are 10 times more sensitive to than us adults because they haven't fully developed. Yep. And there's, there's a little bit, sorry, dude, I don't mean to interrupt you there, but there's a little, yeah, bit, yeah, yeah. More, there's a little bit more to that as well, which people need to understand is that as adults, we've got a little bit of protection against the light as it enters yeah. into our brain because our brains are myelinated, mm -hmm. right? So we've got a myelinated sheath over our brain. Well, that actually, I think it's like it fully forms at like age 22 or 23, something like that. Early 20s is when that kind of properly fully myelinates. And that's when you stop doing crazy shit. Yeah. Kids don't have that, which means yeah. that when they're being exposed to this blue light, it's directly impacting their brain. So what's happening, and this is going to sound really bad. And for anybody that's a parent, I really, I'm not saying anything negative here about what you're doing because you don't know what you don't know but you're basically setting your child up for a very, 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 very high probability of some form of neurological degradation, <clears throat> Parkinson's, Alzheimer's of that nature in their later years by iPad nannying your children yeah. or TV nannying your children. And again, I, I get it. I don't have kids, so I don't know what it's like to have kids and you've got to, you've got to look after them and you haven't got the time and you know, you've got cooked dinner while one's hanging off your shirt. Like I, I get it. I get it. Like, but my parents didn't have that when I was young, there were no ways of putting in front of anything. We probably would have had a TV, but that would have been it. But yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, it would have been, I mean, if, if, if my grandparents had walked in and my mum had popped me in front of the TV while she was doing something, they'd have gone crazy. They'd have been like, what are you doing? Bring mm. your kid in the kitchen with you, put them in a chair, make him colour in, make him do something else. Like, not in front of that. And he's sitting way too close and make his eyes go square, right? Remember that? You get square eyes if you sit close to TV. <laughs> so, it's really bad for children, like very mm. bad. And, and I'm not sure, again, if you've got the studies in, in that spreadsheet, Jeff, but the one of the... Yeah, go on. yeah, sorry. So we're talking about children. You know, one of the most important studies that, you know, deserves to be talked about is something that Dr. Martin Moore-Eed touched on in his book, The Light Doctor. And it's, it's, it's this, that the more blue and rich light that we subject our children to, um, it's leading to what's called precocious puberty, just early onset puberty. In the countries that have the most uh, technology use, um, like I believe it was Japan, they're they're reaching puberty. The girls are like sometimes eight years old now. We've never seen this before in the history of humanity. Look what's happening to our children. It's like this is not this is not a joke. Like we need to start taking this seriously. It seems so innocent. To mm -hmm. hand your child a phone at full factory settings or an iPad, and it seems so like innocent, but people need to realize that you can you don't have to swear off devices. You can stick your kid on the iPad. Everybody needs a digital babysitter sometimes when there's just you're alone and this. I get it, but when I hand my child the iPad during the day, it's on full night shift mode. How hard yeah. is that? Just yeah. turn down the blue spike, like. Blue in the day is good. Uh, blue in the night is bad. But, you know, there's some nuances where you want to just at least mitigate the blue spike by turning night shift mode up. It just makes the picture a little more yellow, like they will hardly even notice. And then so that will help the screens become less addictive and, and be less troublesome. But, um, you know, then at night, there's a thing called the, the red color filter. Uh, on any iPad or iPhone, you guys are familiar, just you triple click the side button and it turns it red just like that. So um, I guess the point that I'm getting at is precocious puberty. I don't know what kind of evidence uh, anybody's waiting on before we start taking this seriously, because there's the only studies that we've seen are in rats. Yep. Okay. Yep. And so, but, but what they found was the, the rats, which they gave, 12 hours of only blue light, just like a little LED light that was shining into their cage for 12 hours versus, um, 
you know, I think they did a red light or just a not blue and rich light. The, the rats that uh, were exposed to the blue light reached puberty. Uh, I forget the amount of time because I didn't know we were going to look at it here. We can look it up, but they reached puberty like 20% uh, shorter a period of time than those experienced to normal, natural, or non-blue light. So what does that tell us? Mm -hmm. um, we are living, so we, 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 there will never be a, an experiment done on children because it'd be unethical to test this out on them in a laboratory setting and exposing their eyes. And not only that, they don't have as short of lifespans as rats to where we can test these things out and know within a matter of weeks. So I guess the point is, anybody that's a naysayer on whether this affects your children's uh, time in which they reach puberty, what are you waiting on? There's never going to be a study in humans. And what that means is we are living right now in the world's most unethical experiment, uncontrolled experiment that's ever been done on our children. Yep. Mm. Well, and going on that as well, because uh, <clears throat> I think we should touch base on that blue light just very quickly. We can. Yeah. The story of where it all came. Mark, I think if we could put you into the spot here a little bit, because you were the first one that told me this, where it sort of came about blue light. Mm -hmm. um, I believe it was, was it the mafia? Yeah, or it was. was it? Yeah. It was the mafia. Slot the one armed bandits for the, uh, you know, the machines in Vegas, they realized, right, that the blue light, you know, people were much more addicted to these things. They would sit in front of them for hours and just hand them over more money. Uh, so, yeah, I think we both probably learned that from Jack Cruz. And, uh, but, like, people have known about this for 50, 60, 70 years that blue light, like, uh, causes, you know, uh, it, it makes us you know, addicted to these things, literally. Like, remember when computer screens first came out in the 80s? It was all back, black on the background, right, with the green text. Yeah. Um, you guys are a little before your time, maybe, but no, no, I, I'm, I'm 43. I remember the comment. Okay, was same age. All right, we're in the same boat, but I remember that. And then why did Windows, when that, when that first came out, Microsoft Windows, why did it switch yeah, to the yeah. whole screen is background, but the text is black? Yep. That's completely unnecessary. That's a waste of energy to light up the whole screen background to be white. I'll tell you why. Because it tested well. And mm -hmm. by tested, it means it literally drive the dopamine levels up in people. It wasn't just their subjective determination that they liked the screens better. It made their dopamine levels go up. The blue and rich light in that with that completely white background, like we see on the back of all of our web browsers now, which could be black. Uh, we weigh a lot more healthy for us. That makes us more addicted to these screens. It, uh, it raises our cortisol levels. It uh, suppresses our melatonin. You name it. There's so many different uh, different causes that, that blue light causes. Like, what do you call it when you ingest something and it causes a biological reaction in your body? What well, we call that a drug, right? Mm -hmm. And so blue light... It does all these things, suppresses our melatonin, raises our cortisol, um, you know, so many other aspects like light is a drug and yep. we need to start thinking of it that way. And if you're yep. giving your kid an iPad at full factory settings at night like this, you're drugging them. Yep. All you got to do is turn down the color temperature, make it yep. red. You know what I mean? It's not that hard. It's not weird. Your kids will get used to the red background. They can still watch their shows. You can, you don't have to, you don't have to join the old order Amish and like go move to the countryside and swear off electricity for the rest of your life and never use your iPad and never watch TV after sunset. Just put some blue blockers on. If you're watching TV, if you're using yeah. your phone, just triple click and make it red. How hard is that? Yep. Yeah. So, yeah. Do you know what, Joe? I think in the show notes, the, there's a guy that I follow on X called Rusty. He created an app called One Tap Zap. You can purchase it on Gum. You can purchase it on Gum Road for like nineteen dollars. It puts. I don't know if you're going to get to see it on my phone, but it puts this little dot here. If I can press mm -hmm. it, there you go. Which brings up this wheel, and I can change my screen. I can turn it on and off. But what I can do, and the reason why it's called One Tap Zap, is because if you look at if you look at the Wi-Fi signal symbol at the top there, it's currently on. Mm -hmm. 
if I press it, it goes to white. Now you think that's turned it off and it hasn't. Nah, so if I, now so. click, if I now click the Wi-Fi button at the top, it kills the Wi-Fi dead. Right. It turns it off instantly. So if I click complete zap, it will block my whole phone. Nobody will be able to trace me, find me, call me, anything. It completely blocks everything. So it will stop all non-native EMF. It will stop all blue light. It will stop flicker, all of it. So one mm. tap, I think we should put in there because it's a cheap way of doing it and it sets it up for you. There's instructions, but also, and I'm sure Jeff, you know, these guys, I'm part of the um, daylight ambassador community as oh, well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yep. all those guys. Mm -hmm. So I'd love to be able to put the daylight tablet pre-order link in our show notes as well. Because Daylight is the first non-blue light computer tablet. Mm. And everybody can use it. And it's I've used them. They're incredible. Absolutely incredible. And the disgusting thing about it is this, te this technology that's in Daylight has been around for a really, really long time. It's, just, it's been difficult to put it into a tablet because they've had a lot of people trying to stop them. But... It's there. So I think it's important that we put that in there. So we put the CRD challenge in there, the one tap zap, the daylight. I'll get um I'll get Tristan to send me a link or Leslie to send me a link for the CR for the um daylight pre-order. Um because it's so important. It really, mm -hmm. really we there's we'd have to go for another hour and ten minutes to discuss exactly what blue light does to the body. But yeah. just to kind of finish <laughs> off what Jeff was saying. Like the reason why it's addictive is because it put it raises dopamine, raises cortisol, which are all the things you get from that reward feeling, like if you're having food or a drug or something of that nature. But it creates what's known as a low dopamine state. So the same reason why people, when they vape, they vape and vape and vape and vape and vape and vape is because it sends dopamine through the roof and then it crashes it way past baseline. So that way then you feel shit. So you now take another hit on the vape and you're way back up there again. And then it brings you back down. Same as porn. Porn does mm. the same thing. Netflix binging, gaming, it all does the same thing. It shoots your dopamine through the roof. And then when you stop using it, it crashes your dopamine, which is when you then go on a dopamine hunt. You will then mm. be looking for other forms of quick dopamine, not purpose-filled, on a mission dopamine, like getting up and achieving your goal dopamine, mm. but cheap dopamine food drugs alcohol tv computer games your phone scrolling all that stuff like i was at an event last night in london watching um dr asima holcher's new documentary first do no harm first do no farm great guy great documentary it will tell you why you should never take a lot of drugs ever again medicational drugs that is pharma pharma drugs lovely guy next to me no, I'm not going to name his name. Lovely guy. Speaking to him before the event, really cool guy. I swear to God, for an hour and a half, every 10 minutes, bright white light. Uh-huh. Mm. It's ingrained. Oh, yes. It's <laughs> dopamine reward system made him grab it just the same way that, you know, rats try to grab uh, pellets from a machine, even when it electrocutes them. Like, it, there's this innate sense of got to check it got to check it and it's not mm. just mental it's not the content it's not that it's, it's so many bad. aspects so it's the content it's like i might get a dopamine hit from somebody liking my post or somebody emailing me but it's, it's also the blue light shining yep. that blue light in your eyes watch what happens folks keep your yep. keep your night shift on your phone on 100 percent. not even make it red all day but during the day keep your night shift at 100 percent and you will notice that you become less addicted to your screens. Like you're still going to want to grab it to, you know, to, to check on all the other things that you would want to check on it mentally, but the physical addiction will become less. Watch what happens. It will. Yeah. It's, it's quite uncanny. It really is quite uncanny. And one of the quickest things that you can do as well is I can't remember the name of the glasses, but you can get them. They're, they're not expensive. You can get some cheap proper blue light blocking glasses on Amazon for like 40 quid. The red ones, like ones that Joe's hold. Sleep ZM, there's some other ones like, yeah, there's I've got Spectra, Spectra reviews for a while. Yeah, yeah, there's like Spectra 47 or something like that. Just yeah. buy a pair and two hours before bed, just stick them on. I yep. promise you, within about half an hour, you're going to be nodding off. Like, yeah. you're, you're going 
going to start nodding and nodding. You'll be 10 minutes into your movie or whatever it is that you're watching and you'll be like, you'll be gone straight away. It's quite uncanny what it does because it makes you completely, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? You are not engaged in what you're watching because you blocked the blue light. Like your phone on red light mode is not entertaining <laughs> like in any right. way, shape, or form. It's the most boring thing in the world. Like you go on Instagram, you're like, this is crap. I can't see yeah. anything. So while yeah, I'm on it, so you come off it and you don't go on it. Like I barely touch my phone because of that. So right. I think these are some very simple things that we, we can do. And obviously then the rest of it will be explained through the CRD challenge and all the rest of it. We want to give all the good stuff away. But uh, gentlemen, this has been an hour and 15 minutes. Is there anything else you would like to discuss or talk about before we wrap this up and let Jeff get on with his day and us with our <laughs> evening? Um, no, I don't think so. I just, uh, you know, encourage everybody to get out there and sign up for the CRD challenge. It costs you nothing. And it's yeah. going to teach you all the things that took me and Daniel and um, Avi and Lauren, you know, hundreds and hundreds of hours before we could actually learn and comprehend this stuff. And it's our mission to just give you a download of our brains, the basic level information that is, in my mind, requisite, required learning for every human being, because there's nothing more important to learn about than uh the importance of a stable and strong circadian rhythm, uh, the importance of bright light in the morning, the importance of, uh, you know, melatonin suppression, avoiding melatonin suppression in the evening. All those things will be very clearly and easily uh, and, you know, elucidated in an easily to understand way for as many people as possible that want to sign up. And you're not going to have to wear these silly looking orange glasses at night alone. There's going to be thousands of people all across the globe that will be doing this with you. Ask us yep. questions, meet other people that are in this space because what's happening right now on this planet years later, you know, 20 years from now, once this is all like known, we're going to look back on this period as the beginning of the light revolution. And we're just yep. early adopters in the light revolution is all that it is because this truth of circadian biology it is an absolute truth is is just a fundamental truth of the universe this is how human beings were designed to operate in synchronization with the uh rising and setting of the sun mm -hmm. and uh we're just trying to spread awareness uh, uh, you know to get people to realize that that this is an obvious truth that they should know you and your family will experience better benefits uh, and your health, happiness, energy levels. And the best thing is we got nothing to sell you. We're the only metric that we're going after here is to see how many lives we can improve on this planet. It's, it's going to be a lot of fun. Rack up the score. Love that. Joe, anything you'd like to add to that absolute game busting ending there? I can't wait to do it. I'm really looking forward to doing it. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. I can't wait. When 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 are you launching it, Jeff? Is it October? October twentieth is day oh, yeah. one of the three week challenge. So yeah. no rush. But if you join the uh, school community now, as you guys have done, there are some introductory lessons uh, that are just maybe ten minutes of I think videos. Uh, just the basic introduction to circadian rhythm and why it's so important. And then on October twentieth, uh, week one content will open up, which uh, as I mentioned earlier is about. 20 minutes of educational content. Like you're not signing up to do, uh, you know, a whole course in something because nobody has the time for that. Like I said before, so come and join and, and learn all you can and uh, improve the life of you and your entire family. Glad to have you guys on board too. I noticed you joined. Thank you. Thank you. Back you the whole way, brother. Back you the whole way. Okay. So ladies and gentlemen, CID Challenge, please sign up. It's free. It's a no-brainer. You're going to be with thousands of other people doing this around the world, and you'll be part of a tremendous new light-driven movement. It just makes sense. So considering it's free, considering that it's going to be easy for you to implement, and you're going to reap some tremendous benefits, it's just something which everybody should be doing. So, Jeff, thank you for your time, brother. Really do appreciate it. Thank you for that brainchild as well. Everybody, thank you for tuning in. This is me, Mark, Joey, and Jeff signing out. Stay blessed, everybody. We'll speak to you on the next one. See you guys. Bye.